The current traditional uh, mold making technique is very expensive and it's also time consuming. Um, the other problem it has is also 60 to 70 percent of the material goes uh, as a waste. The main goal of this research is therefore to replace the current uh, traditional mold making system by additive manufacturing. My approach towards achieving this goal was I had to make a research on uh, the different additive manufacturing techniques available in the market. Uh, based on uh, those techniques, I also had to choose the right material for uh, the right printer. Uh, this is uh, a, a mold I made for my uh, cell phone. Uh, I had no clue what 3D printing is all about, so I had to start somehow. So I started with my phone and I made the casing for that one. And also made a product out of this mold. Then uh, I had to go bigger because my assignment is to make uh, big molds for vacuum vision process. So I, that's why I made this one, uh, uh, this mold, and I made the product uh, out of it. Uh, it looks uh, the surface. First of all, it's like that's it's very good. You can also like use it again and again. This was made using the robot arm. They use robot arm as a printer. So I just want to try if uh, this can be used for vacuum vision process. So uh, I cut a section of it and, uh, and sand it, polish it. And then uh, later on, I found out that it's not airtight. And um, one of my requirements uh, is the mold has to be airtight if it's going to be used for vacuum fish process. So I did get the, the surface quality I need, but it's not airtight. Yeah, the uh, robot arm printed mold didn't work. Uh, first of all, it takes too much time to make it smooth. And secondly, it's not airtight. And there's no also access to that 3D printer. So I had to come back to what I have here, the Artmaker 2. So I uh, just I tried I decided to make uh, a mold for ukulele. Uh, assume this is very big, uh, bigger than the print uh, size we have here. So I just cut into sections like this one and uh, find out how to connect these sections so to make it one mold. So uh, I use uh, the epoxy resin to connect them together. It did perfectly good. But uh, when I when you came when you come to the infusion process, it's, it was not airtight again. Yeah, these are the two sides of a uh, single canoe paddle plate. I made this uh, to test if um, I had the chance to print the full size of the canoe plate. Will it be airtight? So I tested it, and it, it and it was. Yeah, this is the uh, one side of the canoe paddle plate. So I made it in three sections. Uh, I bond them together. Um, there is still the issue of air tightness, uh, but you can still use it. Uh, just you can put it in uh, in, a, in a bag and then conceal it, or you can also use a, a glass plate so that uh, no air will be uh, sucked during the vacuum fusion process. And the second option is you can make a backup to ensure that it's airtight. Yes, yeah, so this mold has been used multiple times. Yeah. Quite still uh, looks relatively good. It's, uh, it's actually quite smooth and uh, it doesn't seem like it's abused yet. You could probably make another couple of products out of it.